So last week I read a book by Neil Postman, which was called Amusing Ourselves to Death. Now what the book talks about is how different forms of media can actually influence how you perceive the message you're trying to get across. So for example, if you read a book, you would get a completely different message from me telling you the same message in a video. Same with, I assume, an audiobook, and definitely the same for a movie. So same exact thing, same script, same everything, just depends on the presentation. So in a book, you read it, there's sort of a, a studying aspect to it. Because it's a book, because you're spending time with it, it's quiet, you're looking at the pages, the words on the pages, something about it makes it seem more powerful. And one good example he gives of this is this student gives an essay to this board that's reviewing for his doctorate or something like that. And he quotes all these different books and he cites the sources for every single one. He's very, makes a very good effort to cite every single source because that's what you do. Now there's one quote that he used, which was from an interview. So I guess he saw this on a YouTube video somewhere and it was just a quote that stuck with him, but he didn't cite the source as it being that YouTube video. So he was like, oh, this was just said. Um, or maybe there wasn't a YouTube video. For some reason, he wasn't able to cite the source because he didn't know where that interview question, whatever it was, originated. And so he said, why are you um, getting all hung up on the fact that I didn't cite this one source? You know, I cited all these books. You're probably not even going to go back and check them all. You don't care. You're just going to take my word for it. Oh, it's cited in a book. It's probably real. Now, this one I didn't cite, and you're making a huge deal about it. So they said, well, you know, a book source is actually much more valuable because, you know, it's a book. You could trust that. If it's just, you know, hearsay, it's not really, it's doesn't really have any value. And so he's arguing this point about how they should be treated the same. Just because it was written or said, it, they still said it. Like, it was still put down by that person. Who cares if it was on a radio show or if it was on a video or if it was in a book? And then they said to him, Okay, well, would you like us to write down that you passed this? Or would you like us to, uh, you know, verbally just say that you passed? He's like, well, you know, at some point I'm going to need this written down because otherwise... You know, if I show it to someone, they're not going to believe that I passed. So he sort of realizes, okay, that's actually a very good point. You do need it to be written down because that is when it has meaning. That's when it actually means something. Now, what the book mostly talked about was television. So I guess we have to go back a little before we talk about television. They talked about how everything was a spoken word and then it became in books. And for a long time, it was just books or it was writing, and then it was letters, and that's all pretty much the same. That's all written down um, words and ideas. And eventually, the telegram was invented. So now you could take a message uh, between two locations that are far apart. So you could have someone in Texas talking with someone in New York. Um, but this wasn't like on the web. This was, you know, a big organization now has the ability to communicate between these two places. And so they sort of felt the need to, you know, fill up newspapers or whatever. They felt the need to communicate regularly. So they would send messages back and forth every day. And really, what is there that you need to know about Texas every single day when you're in New York? Does the weather matter? Maybe, you know, football scores or something like that? And it sort of to, uh, started this kind of like Jeopardy phenomena where we think we're going to be rewarded for knowing all of these useless facts. Now really everything you need to know for the most part even still today is things in your area. What's the weather like in your area? Sure I know that there was a flood in Florida recently and okay yes I may be moving some things to Florida right now but for the average person where I am in Connecticut hearing about a flood in Florida What's the purpose? It doesn't have any relation to their life. It doesn't mean anything to them. Most people aren't global. They don't even care about things within the same country, a couple states over, and they think they care about it. 
So it's this sort of thing with the telegram where all of a sudden we're expected to, you know, pretend to care about all of these useless facts. So then radio comes along and now it's like you have to constantly be telling people all of this different news and useless facts and whatever. And it's really not necessary. So he basically says for that reason, books and the written word is better. There also used to be you know, before the written word was dispersed as much as it is, people used to have debates. And he said that radio debates sort of cut that a little bit shorter because debates used to go for days and days and days. And then the radio listener would only want to listen during maybe one program is like a couple hours. And so you had to condense everything down to get rid of more and more details until it's basically just this is what I believe and there's no time for rebuttals or anything like that. Whereas debates in the olden days would go on and on and on and you'd really like, the purpose would be to find the root cause. But it got towards entertainment, even though it was still, you know, supposedly trying to find the root cause, on the radio it got to become more towards entertainment because you're trying to sell radio ads and things like that. So now you introduce TV and it just gets even more crazy where you have like a 30 minute spot and you're trying to sort of make people think that it's something educational, but there's no way you could possibly go into all the details and tell every part of every story. And then the other thing with TV is people are tuning in at all different times because there's so many channels, people are flipping through. You always need to be entertaining. You can't be going and giving too much background details. You have to avoid the background details, avoid the actual details about the situation, and say, this is what's happening, this is what I think, essentially. But instead of what I think, you have to be more sure about it. You have to say, this is what's happening, this is the truth. And so he sort of says that it's not the media's fault, it's not the news channel's fault for being super biased. It's not necessarily, this probably is what's happening, but it's not necessarily that it's uh, just a group of people controlling the narrative for the whole country. That probably is what's happening. It came around later, um, came along later, but that's not what's happening during the time that this book was written. He's just saying that by necessity, you have to start leaving out the details because it's TV. TV makes everything entertainment. And so what I was saying before, with the useless sports information from Texas and New York, you're sort of changing the whole message where you're no longer giving information that's even useful. You're just giving information for no reason, trying to convince people they should know it for whatever reason, even though that reason is small talk and like one day getting on Jeopardy or something like that. And so he talks about religion as well. You have the spoken word. And then once it was written down, you had a Bible and everything like that. It's really a real religion now. But then you get into radio. Okay, maybe you're reading a passage or something like that. You get into TV. You kind of have to go in with like a really charismatic preacher. And if the person is that charismatic, can they really be just totally about God and really not egotistical because that doesn't really match up with the Bible. And then you get them teaching things that are, you know, whatever looks the coolest. And you're designing your sets in a certain way that isn't really trying to portray the same message as it is hold on to attention. And so basically, the entire world just thinks of everything now in terms of entertainment. I wish this book was written a little bit later and included things like the internet. I think there's like a very brief mention of like the beginnings of the internet, uh, but that was about it. So no TikTok, no YouTube, no Instagram, no Facebook, but as you can imagine, those have made it even worse, shortened attention spans even worse. So we went from you're at this lecture for days and days and days, and you know maybe it lasts a month where they're trying to find the real root cause of something, to here's a book that you're gonna read over a couple days, to, you know, here's a, a radio show, maybe it's like two hours, and then you're like, okay, here's a TV show, it's 30 minutes, and now we're at the point where here's a TikTok, it is five, 15 seconds 
Um, you know, try to get your point across and debate with people in a format that should be, you know, a month long in some cases. Try to get that point across in 15 seconds. Go. Uh, so that's obviously not going to work, and that changes the whole, the information in general that's even being displayed. Now with TikTok, you have China also tweaking the algorithm to be the most useless information possible for TikTok in the U.S. to dumb down the population. So they kind of understood that. Someone in China probably read that book and decided to go all out with it. But that was the book. Um, TV is killing everything as of <laughs> killing everything, meaning killing everything as of 1960 or whenever this book was written. And now TikTok's worse. So basically the medium is extremely important. It completely changes the whole culture, this whole society. Everything is looked at through the new lens of how the newest, most popular media wants you to think. So that's why everyone's attention span is so short, because TikTok necessitates a short attention span. It will not work if your attention span is too long. So that's the book.